Hello everyone, my name is Seymour uh, and I'm the community lead of uh, technology pioneers here at the World Kind Forum. It's an honor to be sharing some of the information about the World Kind Forum as well as other startup related initiatives uh, for this session. Um, the agenda for today is to introduce myself as well as the World Kind Forum in general as well as Technology Pioneers, which is one of the flagship startup initiatives or communities here at the forum, and as well as um, other startup related initi initiatives that I'll be kind of touching on. Before we actually get started, I wanted to introduce briefly about myself, um, and I'm currently leading the Tech Pioneers um, at the forum. And what I do basically um, is to scan different technology trends as well as industry transformation to be able for me to select the right companies that are leading different technologies. And of course, I oversee the selection process of tech pioneers. We currently select 100 tech pioneers each year and we announce at around June timeframe. So that's kind of our selection cycle and I oversee the selection cycle. And I set up strategies uh, to best engage those up and coming startup companies within the forum, as well as strategize ways for tech pioneers to also provide their insights, not just within, but also outside the forum. So that's basically my role. Before I actually go into the details, I wanted to um, see how the media perceived the World Economy Forum. And this is some kind of pictures that I was able to find by typing in World Economy Forum or Davos Forum in Neighbor. And these kind of pictures came up, of course, um, on the left top corner, we have snowy Davos uh, with a lot of buildings and there's like a Congress center. Um, so that popped up. On the right top corner, it's a panel discussion where we have moderator and forum panelists, or four or five panelists, um, talking about certain issues, surrounded by a lot of participants and so on. The left bottom corner, um, we released this uh, report called Global Competitiveness Report. And yeah, the media is always um, really looking forward to seeing where Korea ranks um, um, globally uh, when it comes to competitiveness. And of course, we have fourth industrial revolution as our keyword and Professor Schwab, Klaus Schwab, who's the founder and executive chairman of the forum, um, appears quite often um, in the media. And these, of course, kind of captures uh, capture the, the perception of the forum and what we do, but this is only a part of it. So I'll touch on very briefly about what we exactly do um, here at the forum. So um, basic information, uh, we were founded back in 1971. So it's about 50 years of history that we, we have. And initially, um, 50 years ago, we were founded as the European Management Forum. So our scope of um, geography was, at the start, uh, limited to the Europe region. And at, in 1987, at around 16 years later, uh, we've expanded our geography um, towards a global society. So basically covering the world. Our headquarters is based out of G Geneva. So we are in Geneva, Switzerland, and we have different offices in four different locations, New York, Beijing, Tokyo, and San Francisco. And especially San Francisco, uh, we have Fourth Industrial Revolution Center, uh, Center for the Fourth Indo Industrial Revolution, where we really look at how the public and private sector can go hand in hand when it comes to looking at emerging technologies to ensure that we maximize the benefit of such technologies while minimizing the risks um, uh, of, of those technologies as well. Um, our mission is to improve the state of the world and all the kind of work streams, all the interactions, all the events that we, we host or organize is falling under this mission is to improve the state of the world. Uh, some of the major events that you might have heard of, of course, is annual meeting in Davos. We have 
other kind of meetings as well, um, annual meeting of the new champions is about the future. So new champions that can guide the future um, in uh, an optimistic way. So it's about entrepreneurship, it's about innovation, it's about technologies and so on. So that's very much focused on the entrepreneurship side of uh, different topics. Sustainable Development Impact Summit, we call it SDI Summit, uh, where we really focus on SDG-related topics um, in this summit as well. And other regional summits um, that are going on throughout the, the year, um, those are some, some of our major events. And we also have 16 different platforms, and platforms, which I'll explain later, it can be looked at as important thematic pillars that we think are shaping the future of the world. So I'll explain in detail in the later slides. Our approach um, is at a premise that no single entity can improve the state of the world on its own. Um, entity meaning you know, it can be anything from governments, it can be anything from business sector as well can be also academia, it can be civil society. So no single entity that I've just mentioned uh, that falls into the category of what I've just mentioned, can I improve the state of the world on its own? So we need collaboration and we need leaders uh, from these um, different um, entities like public, um, private sector, large corporates, um, as well as up and coming startups as well. Um, social entrepreneurs uh, cannot be neglected. We have to also look at academia to see if they have innovative kind of ideas or approaches or insights and so on. So what we do basically is to convene the leaders of all these different entities to look at certain issues that we are um, as humanity are facing and how we can pave the way into the future by suggesting um, ideas uh, and timelines to actually to, to, to get there. So this is kind of our approach. And, and if you look at the history of the forum, uh, we were built, um, as I mentioned, in 1971. And at that, same, at, at that time, we were focusing on convening communities. And it was more, more or less a business communities um, within the boundaries of Europe at the start. And we started to build multi-stakeholder communities um, as we have transformed. Um, and we have built more than 50 communities and one of them being a tech pioneer community that I'm, 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 I'm leading on their academic communities, um, business communities, government communities, all different types of communities that we were able to build. And as we were building all these different communities of expert um, kind of network or groups, we were able to generate a lot of insights, a lot of knowledge. Um, and as we, I've just briefly touched upon, we have global competitiveness report, we have global risks report, which really looks at what are some of the risks um, that are threatening the world and how we can actually go about um, overcoming such risks and so on. The last bit is gender gap report um, and so on. So we, we were able to gather all these great insights from different stakeholder groups and were, was able to kind of aggregate all these different knowledge to be able to generate some reports. And based on this kind of reports and insights that we, we were able to gather as a convening platform, um, so to say, is we were able to generate projects um, to actually deploy some of the ideas to actually create an impact um, to the society and businesses and so on. So uh, depending on different kind of thematic pillars, we were able to create numerous projects, over 100 projects that are actually on an ongoing basis um, are um, shaping the future of the world. And now in 2021, we have become the platform and more of an operating system for global cooperations. A lot of um, leaders from different stakeholder groups that I've just mentioned in, in previous slides, they come to us um, and we act as a platform for them to actually interact with each other, to create synergy amongst each of these stakeholder groups 
to be able to provide solutions or directions um, for the world to 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 proceed in, into the future. And these are six platforms and I've just briefly touched that these are important thematic pillars right so uh, we have anything from energy we have mobility we have financial and monetary systems trade um, data policy as data gets really important in the in the fourth industrial revolution we have blockchain uh, which is really picking up um, in different sectors not only in financial uh, monetary systems, but all these, these different industries to make the flow of data uh, more transparent um, and, and so on. So these are 16 platforms and we have different projects or sub work streams within each of the platforms. So um, this is how, how we are kind of looking at different topics. And when it comes to role of startups, um, it's, it's, it's super critical and it's ever more important when it comes to tackling the world's most pressing challenges. So as humanity, we're facing um, a critical issue of climate change. Uh, we also, um, as of today, we are going through some tough times with COVID-19 we also have to come up with renewable energies to, to mitigate the climate change aspect. Um, as um, we collect more data and as there we, have, we know more of artificial intelligence and its abilities and machine learning to be able to learn it by its, itself. Um, yeah, we are going through the automation of different kind of tedious tasks that machine can replace humans with. Aging society also a critical issue um, as the world is now holding more people and it's gonna just increase uh, the number of people that the world uh, will be facing. So all these critical challenges that we're facing, um, startups are at the core of it. Of course, there are kind of incumbents or legacy companies, but startups with their agile nature of bringing innovation to the society, uh, there are different ways that they can contribute uh, by bringing solutions, by partnering with large corporates or academia to be able to bring innovation more rapidly um, into, into society and businesses and so on. So startups are important and this can be seen in different kind of ways. Uh, we have a lot of unicorns, uh, more than 800 as of today, uh, that are actually bringing their solution, deploying their kind of products into the markets and so on. And just the, the, the amount of funding that goes into the startup world has been increasing dramatically and ironically in the times of COVID-19. Uh, so it's clear that role of startups, whether kind of from the view of the World Economic Forum or globally or from venture capital, is critically going up um, at this point in time. Now, just connecting to that, we have Tech Pioneers Community, Technology Pioneers Community here at the World Economic Forum, which is the community of startups. So if you look at the history, we go back 20 years, more than 20 years. Um, it was established back in 2000. And what we do is we select the most innovative and tech-driven um, and also industry leading startups. And we select hundreds of uh, tech pioneers, uh, 100 startups are selected every year. And once they're selected, they're engaging with the forum for the next two years as uh, a formal member um, of tech pioneers um, here at the forum. What we look for when it comes to selection is we look for, of course, innovation, how innovative they are in terms of leveraging their technologies or leveraging existing technologies to be able to create new business models. So that's one very important aspect that we look at. Um, the second aspect is impact, how much of an impact that they can bring to the world, uh, whether it's not too niche, uh, we gear away from it. We want to make sure that the tech pioneers can bring broad, uh, positive impact to the global society. The third aspect is the leadership. We look at the integrity of the leader as well as um, the, the ability of the CEO to 
to be able to provide their insights to other stakeholders because often the interactions um, happen by having them in the same table with other stakeholder groups, right? To be able for them to provide futuristic directions as to how we can solve certain issues um, mapping to their expertise areas. Last but not least, we are also looking at relevance to the forum's work streams. So if they're such a great company, but there aren't kind of projects or kind of work streams here at the forum that they can be plugged into, we would gear away from it. So, but virtually, uh, if you look at the 16 platforms, uh, we have mostly all the projects uh, that are needed in every single sector, right? So mobility covers very broad topics from drones, from space technologies, autonomous vehicles, electric vehicles, and so on and so forth. So if there's a startup that are actually working in one sector, we can at least find one platform in which they can be plugged into. So those are the selection criteria. When it, uh, in terms of quantitative metrics, what we also look for is for the companies that are less than 10 years old. So we're targeting um, those companies that are relatively young, as well as more on the earlier side of their um, funding. So we're looking at around series A, uh, which is our sweet spot. So companies roughly from about 5 million of funding all the way to up to about 30 million. So that's uh, kind of the phase of startups that we are looking at some main events that they will be invited to um, to provide their kind of unique insights is annual meeting of the new champions, which I've earlier touched, which really talks about entrepreneurship, which really looks into the future from a tech technology perspective. So it's really a home ground for a lot of tech pioneers. And we have our own workshop as well, where we gather all the tech pioneers and relevant stakeholder groups uh, to really talk about what is innovation, how we can steer the direction of innovation so that we can positively impact rather than risking the society. Annual meeting at Davos, of course, um, it has Davos covers anything from geopolitical issues, economic directions or industry directions, and also uh, talking about different technologies that we that can shape uh, the the world, the, the global society as a whole. Um, on some some regional meetings that um, they're invited to um, are some important kind of major events that they will be they'll be getting uh, their presence um, to. Some of the past tech pioneers include all these household names, right? So Google, Airbnb, Twitter, Cloudflare, Kickstarter, Slack. All these companies um, at early on in their startup journey uh, were, um, a tech, uh, were tech pioneers. So Google selected back in 2002 and all the other companies um, very early on in their stages of startups and so on. And they have actually become these household names uh, alongside the forum. And there are some Korean companies as well. Uh, we have Kakao. Um, that was selected in 2015. We have Lunit, um, Skylabs, Makina Rocks, Dubrain, Standard Energy. So um, it's, it's amazing that we were able to select companies that are coming from different kind of sectors, right? Skylabs and Lunit coming from healthcare, Makina Rocks on the manufacturing and AI side, Dubrain on the education side, Standard Energy, as the name implies, it comes from energy. And we really, um, I, I joined the forum about four years ago, and from then on, and comparing with now, um, I was able to see a lot of diversification when it comes to Korean startup landscape. So it, it's really incredible how the startup ecosystem in Korea has grown and is growing at, at, at this moment as well. So. And as I mentioned, we are selecting these tech pioneers to really provide some great insights and vice versa, we provide them the stage to do so and how we provide and what kind of opportunities these tech pioneers get. Um, these are kind of the four pillars that I've just laid out. First is being invited to different high level events of the forum. So 
for example, um, annual meeting of new champions, uh, which is called Summer Davos, which really looks at entrepreneurship um, or future innovations. We invite tech pioneers as one very important voices of what's out there in the industry that's really poised to uh, shape the future or is, is currently shaping the future. And when it comes to talking about innovation or technologies, it's not about just startups, right? It, you have to have corporates, we ha you have to have academia and so on. So when tech pioneers actually join such kind of meetings, um, they really broaden their scope uh, because oftentimes they are bounded by own, their own networks. And it's really hard to actually jump out of that and by coming to these kind of high level events um, they get to actually connect with other folks um, that are experts from different stakeholder groups and that really broadens their vision that really broadens how they look at certain issues um, so that's one very big value to the tech pioneers the second kind of important value is being invited to join projects under a platform. And uh, just to give you an, one example, let's say we have selected a drones company uh, working in drone or kind of manufacturing drones or drone as a service, depending on which kind of businesses that they look at. And we have one project called Medicine from the Sky which really looks at how drone can help logistics when it comes to issues of vaccine delivery or medical supplies or other kind of um, products that can be shipped from point A to point B. And oftentimes these are kind of um, ways that are remote, that are not really connected to the cities where there's a great um, systematic way of handling logistics. So it's an important project to look at uh, the equitable society when it comes to logistics and so on. So that those kind of, this is just one example that I really went deep into the drone technologies for any companies in education or um, energy or healthcare, uh, we have projects that they can specifically go into and contribute. And this is slightly different from number one, um, being invited to meetings and that this is like very thematic. So we compensate um, the first aspect to the second one, more of a general approach compared to a very specific approach so that they can actually be surrounded by the, the experts that are directly related to their businesses. So this is super helpful as well in that they actually can contribute to specific work streams here at the forum and in doing so, they can actually interact with others that are kind of peripheral to their uh, businesses and so on. So those two are more on the how, how they can actually leverage the, the forum's platform to contribute and interact with other stakeholders. The third aspect is we invite tech pioneers to share their thought leadership and how they do that is in, in, in general, they would um, submit for an agenda article. So the forum has the agenda article platform where we tap into uh, different insights of the constituents that we engage here at the forum. And one of them being tech pioneers. Um, some others can be um, universities, some others can be business uh, folks as well, or public sector as well. So one of them being tech pioneers, um, they um, share their insights by writing um, an agenda article. And our agenda article is quite powerful in that we have 6 million viewers um, on a monthly basis when it comes to um, aggregating all the agenda articles that are published on a monthly basis. So quite powerful for them to actually share their insights uh, for people to really learn about implications of technologies or its impact to the future society. So this is a great way to share their insights that can actually raise awareness or raise visibility of a tech pioneer. So this is one great chance for them to actually leverage as well. The last bit is 
being surrounded by other tech pioneers, right? So they're coming from, if you select 100 tech pioneers, they're coming from, for example, for 2021 cohort, they're coming from 26 different countries. We have 32% female CEOs. So we're really looking at diverse diversity of, of the community. And when you think about it, um, 99 others, other tech pioneers, are coming from different industries, different geographies, different gender profiles, and so on. And it's a great chance for them to actually learn about different perspectives. And when what's also important is that they're in the same boat um, of leading a company uh, under super um, high pressure to actually survive. Um, also raise funding to be able to secure a runway for them to actually survive through their journey. And also they need to hire people, they need to keep on innovate. Sometimes they need to pivot as well. So having these either 99 tech pioneers as peers or fellows of folks that they can actually provide mentorship to or get mentorship from that's an important asset for them. So these are all great kind of values that they get out of uh, by engaging in this program. So we would really, we are really providing this space for them to really scale their businesses, really share their ideas so that the world can change in a positive way. So it really aligns with their mission to improve the state of the world. The reason why we invite tech pioneers is to improve the state of the world through different activities that we I've just laid out here. Some examples, just to give you who we have selected, Appeal Sciences uh, was selected back in 2018. And what they do is by extracting um, materials from, uh, from a fruit, um, they can actually uh, put that um, on top of the fruit. For example, there's avocado and you would extract and you would kind of coat it. Um, and these are edible, of course, because it's natural. It's naturally from the fruit itself. Um, and by using these coating products, um, the, the fruit can can last twice as long. So it would, it's, it's highly critical to reduce the amount of um, fresh fruits uh, or vegetables that are lost during the supply chain um, and, and so on. So it's really contributing to climate change in, in its impact to reduce the food waste um, during from the from the production towards the consumption so in, in between volocopter is creating or designing electric multi-rotor helicopters um, and they're looking very far ahead into the future um, not just near the future to actually create e-taxis um, air, air vehicles design for air taxis um, for kind of city or possibly rural areas and so on. And of course, because of the safety issues, because of regulatory issues, they can't really deploy it in a scalable way at this point, but they're really paving the future alongside the public sector to really think about um, how the future city would look like. Um, and that's uh, another example. The last example that I have here is air protein. And what they do is they use CO2 in the air and a special type of microbes um, called hydrogenotrophs. And by combining those two materials together, they can actually create um, proteins. And as you know, um, cattle are one very important source of carbon emission. And by using their solutions in a, in, in a scalable way, we can actually reduce the impact of um, carbon um, emission from the cattle and really be able to, to, to consume protein in an alternative way. So these are some important um, examples of um, tech pioneers. I mean, these are 
just a subset of it. And we have a lot of SaaS companies. We have different companies from energy, healthcare, um, data platforms as well. Um, but just wanted to highlight these three companies um, just to give you an example of who we are interacting with. And as I mentioned, they come to these different meetings. Often times they're invited to speak as well because often their agendas, their expertise um, is so interesting and futuristic. A lot of people would like to hear from them. So they get a lot of speaking roles to be able to share their insights. And um, the second point that I've highlighted in their values is to actually go deep into expertise areas within a given platform of their relevance. So you can see that on the top, um, it's about, it's from the mobility platform and a white, per, white paper has been written and many of the tech pioneers were involved and were shaping how the white paper should be written and so on. Um, third bit, um, as I've touched on, uh, it's about knowledge share and through our agenda article platform. And a lot of them uh, submit their ideas and get a green light to be able to publish their articles through the forums platform. And we promote it in different ways in LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. There are a lot of followers that really are keen to hear about the World Economy Forum. Um, so these are all important kind of values that I've highlighted. And we've done an analysis about a couple of years ago of the performance of tech pioneers compared to the industry. And to, be, to, to, to give you a little bit of highlight, um, the percentage of exiting, uh, meaning that they get acquired, or go on a public um, is about three times higher than the industry to sustain their businesses. Of course, um, um, tech pioneer, just like any other startups, they are in the end a startup, right? So a lot of them fail, but to sustain their business, it's about twice as high. To fail um, is a less than 30%. So compared to the industry, because of we, we think the, the, the reason being that they're more successful is that they're exposed to diverse ideas, insights, as well as networks, and really come to, to, to sharing their knowledge, which can open the doors to other opportunities and so on. And as long as tech pioneers and the startups that we engage uh, create positive um, energy to change the world, we are more than happy to provide um, other opportunities that that can um, that can support um, in that direction. Some of the kind of lessons learned uh, from from these uh, from managing the community uh, from my side are these kind of four. So when I look at a successful tech pioneer, especially is their mindset is always to give first. Um, yeah, they're more than happy to provide their insights to the fellow tech pioneers um, or other future to be entrepreneurs, as well as other kind of stakeholder groups from businesses and public sectors. So they're always willing to give. And naturally speaking, when they actually give, um, it naturally comes back. And yeah, the, the mindset of giving first is the core to their success. That's one thing that I've learned. Um, and also they're mission oriented um, rather than just sharing their solutions or pitching for their ideas. They always bring it high level and kind of really focus on big missions. And that always on the conversation and the lands and the big mission rather than kind of more of a granular solutions that they're granular solutions uh, below those kind of big missions. The third aspect is really truly enjoying discussions and seeking knowledge. And yeah, oftentimes a lot of tech pioneers are kind of placed in a discussion that are not 
core to their expertise areas. And what they do is, yeah, they really interact with others um, and really with the mindset of being really curious to learn about such topics and possibility of like connecting different dots um, that can even create more synergy um, and so on. And they're not afraid to be kind of jumping into discussions that, or topics that they're not really confident to speak about. And they're genuinely very curious to learn. So the enjoying and being curious um, is one um, other aspect that I think is core to very successful tech pioneers. Last bit is like capturing the moment. Um, they're given kind of moments to, 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 to present their ideas and whether it's one minute whether it's three minutes or ten minutes or one hour they can easily tailor to each of the circumstances and really make the, the time efficient to be able to, to to capture that moment and transform into a meaning uh, with um, those that they're in conversation with and also uh, we've learned by going through the COVID times that unicorn isn't the ultimate solution um the vision which is great to have um when it comes to having a vision of unicorn aim high to grow and dominate the market is the vision uh that the startup should have but when it comes to execution um we need to be really resilient um just like camels um they're resilient they're surviving in deserts they're really cautious when it comes to, to look into the future. Um, and they're going step by step, um, not really driving forward without looking sideways. Um, they're being really careful. Um, they're, they set their goal, a long-term goal, but also have short-term goal to actually get there. They're super focused on customers um, in any situations. Um, rather than just driving their product. So they're really looking into the customer uh, kind of feedback and so on. So having the vision of unicorns, while also uh, when it comes to executing their strategies, it's more of camel. So having those two mingled together, um, if we observe a lot of startups, yeah, they fall into this category as well. And what, what I do personally, aside from all the work of managing the, the tech partners community, selecting and so on, is try to capture a lot of insights and kind of transform that into articles. So there are a lot of people that are not necessarily familiar with the innovation or startups world um, can learn about um, such important insights. So I have, because we have tech partners from different countries uh, written two articles about um, five different kind of ecosystems or countries and how they're different, how they're fostering startup um, innovation or startup policies. And also because a lot of tech partners are looking really into the future, their projections or predictions into the five years ahead, those were um, some really interesting articles that I was able to put together um, some other kind of topics that we have written together um, and the, the third bit insights on continuing to deliver innovation in academia. Um, tech partners had a discussion with university presidents or head of kind of innovation office under a different academia. We were really able to generate how the innovation from the university environment can be translated actually into uh, the industries and so on. And so we were able to decipher a lot of great lessons um, and insights and we put together to be able to share with others uh, that are in the world. And some other topics that I think uh, we will be able to provide uh, to the world soon, um, to be shared soon, are these kind of topics because they come from so many different backgrounds um, and of course, diversity uh, being very important uh, to unlock creativity, creativity um, how diversity within their respective organizations helped 
them along their startup journey. So that's one thing that I'm really tapping into as well. Uh, what's one advice that they could share with entrepreneurs of the future um, to ensure that, yeah, they share their lessons learned um, to make sure that um, the future generation can learn from them. What's your one best failure and what have you learned from it? Of course, being an entrepreneur um, means that you constantly test a lot of different ideas, you try new things, and of course, along the way you fail. But yeah, what's like one best failure that you thought was super meaningful? And what was one core lesson that you were able to learn from that? I thought that would be an interesting topic to be shared with the world. Last bit is what's your unique solutions uh, to fight climate change? So there are a lot of tech pioneers that are working in different aspects or different kind of areas that are bringing their own unique solutions that can contribute to fighting the climate change. So those are the topics that will be shared um, to the world soon. And I'm thinking of brainstorming different ideas as to how we can kind of tap into the play, uh, collective brain power of tech pioneers to, to collect unique kind of insights to be shared with the, the, the world. Aside from the community that I'm managing, um, we have other startup initiatives as well. And one of the, the most recent as well as impactful uh, initiatives is Uplink. Um, and it's been announced back in 2020 Davos um, that we will be creating this Uplink. And what, what we do basically is we're convening um, innovators in different topics and mostly, uh, if not all, are related to climate change. So as you can see from the right side, uh, we we're talking about trillion trees, how we can plant trees to be able to reduce the amount of CO2 that's emitted or to be able to absorb a lot of CO2 from, from the air. Uh, Global Plastics Innovation uh, Network really looks at uh, the issues around plastics. Um, we have Tropical Forest uh, Commodities Challenge, Clean Energy Transitions, and of course, um, looking at future health equity is so important as well. So all these challenges, we're posing some important kind of problems or issues that we need to solve to make the world a better place while being inclusive or equitable. Um, and what we do is we, we, with the problem statement, we're gathering or kind of sourcing different ideas from those that are working in such areas and it's an open innovation platform to crowdsource on different solutions and a lot of innovators um, are submitting their own solutions and what we do is we look at each one of them and select the best solutions and really um, kind of scale that through the platform so we have vast network of let's say investors, um, um, academia, uh, businesses, and so on. And once uh, we think um, such ideas that we think are, are great, we are able to connect them to the right stakeholders so that they can talk to them to scale their businesses, create synergy with other stakeholders. So posing these challenges yeah we were able to source a lot of great um ideas and are in the process of scaling that through the platform um and all topics are related to kind of sdgs as you can see from here so yeah startups are already an important part of our lives um if you think about the services or products that you use yeah, you'll be surprised to see how many of them are coming from startups. And this will only continue, and this will only um, be become more important um, and more important part of our lives um, as we go into the future. And with this in, in, in our mind uh, from the forum, we will only be strengthening 
the engagement, our engagement with, with startups and bright-minded futuristic entrepreneurs uh, to solve uh, the, the world's most pressing challenges. And um, I would like to um, end this talk uh, by stating that the forum will be strengthening our kind of engagement. And if there are any kind of great startups that you are aware of, or if there are any ideas that we can possibly collaborate together um, from the forum side, as well as engaging the startups, please do let me know. But, um, just wanted to highlight um, throughout this past kind of 30 minutes or so on how we are putting emphasis on innovation in the era of fourth industrial revolution and how the startups are playing such an important and critical role in terms of shaping the future. Um, and I would like to end this um, talk um, at this point. Um, and thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And really looking forward to the successful um, workshop. Um, workshop. Thank you.